Debex, amplifying voices, accelerating change. Please help me welcome to the stage, Carla Gibson. Hello. I am so grateful to be here tonight. Last Tuesday, we were on the highway in the HOV lane and there was a gentle rain. I'm from the Midwest and I've driven in all kinds of weather conditions, so I didn't think anything of it. We're cruising along and all of a sudden, the car was going sideways. I can't even tell you what I did. I turned the wheel, I did something that I learned in driver's ed when I was 15 years old. But it didn't seem to make a difference. We were sliding across lanes of traffic. I looked over. We were turned almost 180 degrees this way. And it occurred to me, other cars were going to hit us. I screamed, no. And I watched my daughter's stricken face as she tried to figure out what was going on. The car suddenly turned another 180 degrees, and we were flying back in the other direction. And you know, the center median was there. It didn't matter how much I pumped the brakes. It didn't matter how much I turned the wheel. I looked up and I thought, this is it. We are going into that cement divider at 50 miles an hour. And we did. Now, as you can see, I'm fine. <laughs> and my daughter's fine. Miraculously, my car absorbed the impact and we were actually able to drive away. We had some minor bruises, a little soreness, and after a couple of chiropractic adjustments, I actually feel better physically than I did before the accident. <laughs> but mentally and emotionally, I've been a mess. In the first couple days following the accident, I'd feel panicked every couple of hours and just start to cry. At night, I'd fall asleep easily, but then I'd wake up in a sweat and a panic. The last second before the impact flashes into my mind randomly, and I'm gripped with fear as if it's happening. Just telling you this story, my neck starts to hurt, and I want to cry. My whole body is tense, and my heart is racing. And I bet yours is too. But why? You're safe right now. You're sitting in this beautiful theater, listening to all these entertaining and inspiring talks. You're surrounded by people, some of which you know and love. So why are you having a physical reaction to hearing my story? It's because the primal part of your brain has been activated. This part of your brain doesn't think, judge, or reason. It just reacts. And thank God. <laughs> I mean, even though you're not driving a car right now, just hearing about my experience starts a feed-forward mechanism that gets your body ready to respond should you experience such a threat. Now, you might think, gosh, this is a problem. But no. What you're experiencing is the miracle of your body's innate ability to respond and keep you alive. See, your body, your brain, creates patterns from all the experiences you've encountered as long as you've been alive. You've, read, you've driven a car before, so when I start talking about something that happened to me in a car, you have a pattern, you have some experience with that. Hearing my story reminds your body of a potential threat, and so you react. Now, you have over 70,000 thoughts per day, and your body responds in some way to all of them. Not all of your thoughts will activate the fight or flight response, but a majority of them do. And it's kind of like if you worked in an office where every day someone pulled the fire alarm. Sometimes they pull it more than once a day. What's it like to work in that building? I mean, you wouldn't get much done. And your local firemen would be exhausted. They wouldn't even be ready if they had to fight a real fire. And how long would it be before you just quit listening to that fire alarm? It's stressful. And when you're responding to an alarm, what happens in your body is that important functions such as digestion and cell repair are put on hold. All the energy you'd use for that gets shunted out to your large muscles 
Large muscles take lots of vitamins and minerals to fuel. You know, instead of using those resources to heal and grow, you'll now be using them to fight and run away. And that's fine. That's actually perfect. When you go back to resting, when the threat is gone, you'll be able to replenish those reserves. And that's the ideal. That's what you want. You want to be able to respond to a threat in any moment, and when the threat is over, you want to go back into a state of rest and digest and heal and grow. That's what's called being adaptable. Now, I'm a chiropractor, and in my office, I actually don't focus on the traditional chiropractic adjustment and only look at is your spine aligned or the bones in place. What I look at is how adaptable are you to the stresses in your life? The techniques I use are designed to interrupt these automatic responses that might not be necessary and leave you with resources so that you can adapt when you need it. Now we can actually measure your adaptability through a scan or a, um, a test called heart rate variability. Graphing the variations of your heartbeat can show how stressed you are and how it impacts your capacity to heal. Now up there, the little white box is the patient, and ideally that little white box would be up there in the green area. The farther away from the center line, the more stressed they are, and then the farther down, the more depleted they're becoming from their stress. Now when this patient began her care with me back in February, I didn't have to run this test to know that she was stressed. She told me. She came in because she'd been dealing with chronic fatigue for a couple of years. It had gotten so bad that she had to leave her job, and just coming to her appointments with me was exhausting. She'd been doing all kinds of things, eating a, a great diet, taking lots of supplements, trying to figure out what was going on, and she had a great attitude. We worked together for five months, and I took another scan. As you can see, her heart rate variability began to improve. Now, on the graph, this might look like a small improvement, but the shift in her quality of life was dramatic. She's been able to travel, she can enjoy life again, and she can even return to working part-time. But see, I don't think that's the most important part. What I think is important is that she now knows that her body has the ability to heal. 60% of Americans, 60% of Americans are suffering from one or more chronic diseases. Chronic disease is caused by the body doing everything right, but at the wrong time. It's like that false alarm. It's like my blood pressure increasing right now, and my heart racing just because I'm remembering a crash. If you're suffering from a chronic disease, it can seem like there's no hope of ever being well again but I want you to know there is hope. You were created from one single cell and you grew into an entire human being in just nine months. And that power has never left you. That's the power that responds perfectly to every stimulus and that power can heal anything from the smallest paper cut to cancer you can begin to unleash that power now. Just sit up in your seat and then relax your shoulders. Take in a big, deep breath and then let it out. Do you notice you're already starting to relax? When you become present, your body can tell the difference between the real fires and the false alarms and healing starts to happen. So start adopting daily practices that keep you present to what's happening now. Seek out a chiropractor like me who can help you with the responses that are coming from patterns that no longer serve you. And as you create new patterns, your body will respond differently and you'll create health, vitality, and wellness with ease. Thank you.